Hi there. Today we're going to discuss uh, proprioception. I did that response video to the two idiot, allegedly dying, fraudulent fucks in Australia and their quack Mr. Bergman in California. And Mr. Bergman kept talking about proprioception. Well, let's talk about proprioception in a medically approved, realistic fashion. Um, you'll notice that the the follicle, follicle organization has been relatively achieved, and I have a new t-shirt. Today's t-shirt is brought to you by Option B Airsoft, um, the guys I happen to shoot with. So the team, some of us got some t-shirts, um, I got mine, and it simply says Option B. So, uh, now then, proprioception. Proprioception is a difficult thing with those of, well, those of us that had stroke because we may have other either muscular, neuromuscular, or neurological deficits uh, which may hamper our mobility, our independence, and then you get proprioception thrown in on top of that. Well, yeah, that can make life very, very interesting. So let's just define some terms again. So what is proprioception? Right? Proprioception is how your brain integrates information from your senses, meaning your body position, your body movement, how fast you're moving or not, are you moving or not, what direction are you moving or not, what part of your body are you moving or not, and how that is related to your balance, how that's related to your core stability, how that's related to are you going to find the floor? Right? So things like um, if your arm is out parallel to the ground and then you go to bend in one direction, right? Do you and you have to keep your arm in the same position, are you able to do that? If you put your arm out to the to the side and you look at your fingertips and then you turn your head away and you count to thirty. And then you close your eyes and you count to 30. Does the position of your arm move while you're not physically looking at it? Does the position of your arm move when you close your eyes, right? If there is no difference in movement or positioning of that arm, there should be no issue with proprioception, right? Now, proprioception breaks down into conscious and unconscious. Conscious is communicated through the dorsal column in medial, medial lemiscus pathway to the brain. And non-conscious is, you know, communicated through the dorsal spinal cerebellar tract, right? Um, non-conscious reaction is seen in the human reflexes or writing, uh, writing reflexes, right? In the event that the body tilts in any direction, the person will cock their head to level, right? So you'll, so you should be able to naturally find your level, right? Um, so things like when the police do field sobriety testing, right? What they're actually testing in some cases is your level of either conscious or unconscious, you know, uh, proprioception. So you may have deficits in addition to your proprioception right now the great fact is proprioception issues can be um what's what i'm looking for can be addressed <laughs> and the best thing is chiropractic medicine has nothing to do with that not nothing at all there is nothing a chiropractor can do for you to assist you with your proprioception there is no mechanical way to contort a body, twist a neck, snap a spine. Um, any of none of that will resolve a proprioception issue. What resolves a proprioception issue is specific activities and tests and tasks that are given to you by either a um, occupational therapist or a physiotherapist at the direction of either your general practitioner or a neurologist, right? So you get referred to these people 
and they create a treatment plan. The first part of the treatment plan um, for proprioception is they do tests. So those tests could be something as simple as walking down a line. Uh, those tests could be moving uh, discs from one side of the, the table to another. That could be um, creating a, pay, a place setting, you know, for, you know, spoons, knives, and forks, and whatnot. Um, there's, there's many reasons why you may have a proprioception issue, and there's many tests they could do for a proprioception issue to determine how impacting your proprioception may be, then they have to temper that with how physically altered will your outcome be? Like, are you always going to have a limp? Are you always going to drag a leg? Are you going to have relatively um, uh, persistent foot drop? I have, I have had foot drop. I have to be conscious about walking and I'm going to have to be conscious about walking for the next year or so to get that back into just a rote behavior, right? Where I'm, I have to remind myself to step out. I have to remind myself, you know, to properly walk. And, and that's part of my uh, issues with, with movement. I still have to remind myself. But the proprioception issues I had, right, cannot be resolved by any kind of quackery or buffoonery. You are going to be in a gym um, or in some kind of physiotherapy like rehab setting, occupational therapy rehab setting, for as long as it takes. Now, what do you need to practice proprioception? Well, one of the simple skills, can you sit up on your bed or in your bed unaided and then maintain a proper aligned seated position for your bed. You're not slouching, you're not hunching, you're not deviating to one side. You're able to maintain, you know, proper sitting posture in bed and you're able to get from a lying down posture to your, on your own, right, without any assistance, um, to a, an upward sitting position and then maintain that upward sitting position. That is probably one of the simplest proprioception tests they're gonna have you do in the hospital. <laughs> it's one of the simplest proprioception exercises you can do in a bed or on a couch or on the floor. Um, other proprioception exercises, um, and again, this is a form of exercise. So you're going to have to look at repetitions and you're gonna have to look at cycles. Um, just like if you're going to go to the gym, you're going to do how many sets of how many reps and you're going to cycle through that. So today's going to be a leg day. Tomorrow's going to be an arm day. Next day is backs, you know, whatever. Um, so you want to, you want to stimulate the proprioception, um, in the various ways you need to, and you're going to want to alter it up. So you may try, uh, walking down a line, right? Uh, I did this and it, it looked... Um, probably look crazy to people around me, but I would simply go out to the sidewalk, um, beside where I live and you've got that like three and a half inch concrete strip of where the curb meets the sidewalk. I'd be like a five-year-old and try to walk down that, right? And, and, and try to keep my balance. Um, uh, I would do other things, uh, other exercises for proprioception. And again... I'm not going to get into specifics about what exercises are the best or, or, or whatnot, because I'm not a physiotherapist. I've just had the benefit of being in the accompaniment of a brilliant one who truly cares about her charges. Um, and she's an amazing woman. Uh, and Nancy, if you happen to be watching this, thank you. Yeah. So, um, other things. Go get at the dollar store or Walmart or Canadian Tire or wherever. Um... A small exercise ball, a little bit bigger than, say, basketball size, maybe to volleyball size, depending on how big you are yourself. Simple exercises um, that, you know, place the ball on the wall, place your back on the other side of the ball, and try to basically do a squat moving up and down. Um, you know, uh, place the ball between, lying down, right, placing the ball uh, between your ankles, 
bring that into you, grab the ball, put it under your knees, you know, or between your knees, lower your knees. Like, so there's like all of that's proprioception. You have to try to maintain your balance. Could be doing planks, uh, trying to attempt a push up. Um, we would do wobble board, right? Uh, both oh, eyes open, eyes closed. It took me month, month and a half to be able to do a minute on the wobble board without wanting to, you know, find the floor. Um, now, another thing, uh, bean bags. So you get colored bean bags, blue, green, red, plaid, whatever. Um, and you throw them on the ground, right? Uh, now I help teach Nancy something that we use in shooting drills called a color drill, right? Where there'd be a, a color marker on your target and someone would say, you know, shoot yellow. Well, if you don't have a yellow marker on your target, you're not shooting that round, right? Well, she would take, um, colored beanbags, throw them on the floor all over and say, you know, go get the red one, go get the green one, go get, and I, I'd have to walk, scan, find it, move to it, bend over. Now, bending over, now your proprioception, right, is taking a different form of activity because as you're moving, scanning, and tracking, that's one form of proprioception and how your body's taking in that stimulation. Now you have to stop in relative relationship to the thing you want to pick up. And now you've got to bend over to pick that thing up, right? So again, your proprioception now has to make several adjustments as, as your body makes adjustments, as your senses are making adjustments to your body, right? So just consider how that's all interrelated. I would then pick up the colored thing. She would wait for me to become fully standing and erect. And then she'd say, well, go get the yellow one over there. And there'd be a group of them over there, orange, yellow, pink, blue, whatever. And I would then have to walk to the yellow one again. So now I've got to go from a standing position to a moving position, right? And then scan, track, move to where I need to be. So those are some of the exercises that I did for proprioception. Um, and Nancy, if you ever use that color drill with anybody else, you're welcome. <laughs> you know. Uh, one of the other exercises, exercises I did, because Nancy's really big on the, the patient-centered approach, was um, I said, well, stairs are an issue with me. Well, again, uh, due to some foot drop and uh, some spatial relations issues due to the type of stroke I had and its outcome, um, stairs were a very troubling concern. There are six stories of industrial stairs um, in the hospital. Mm. So you go up, you hit a landing, mm. you go up, you hit a floor. You go up, you hit a landing, you go up, you hit a floor, right? Picture that six stories tall or seven stories tall. I would do the entire thing up and the entire thing down as fast as we possibly could. To, to see, you know, and the first time I did the stairs going up, it took a minute and a half, minute and three quarters. Uh, going down took about four and a half minutes because again, my proprioception for going up was easy. It was easily dealt with. My proprioception for going down, I was now concerned because I've now got to put my, my foot out in time and space and there's nothing in front of me but falling, right? And not in a good way. So, there are many exercises you may need to do to help you increase your proprioception. And I'm going to be honest, the, some of these exercises are going to be discomforting. Like I still have a, a, a small amount of problem with bending over. Um, sometimes it is getting better. Uh, however, I can still suffer from proprioception issues. And it's, it's not something that I like doing. You know, and unfortunately, this is a thing for people that have had a stroke, right? There are people that will have changes in how they relate to their environment post-stroke, be that the sense of touch, uh, be that um, how you perceive your body's position, uh, be that your sense of sight, your sense of hearing, your sense of smell, um, you know, uh, are you able to feel pain or not? 
um, you know, how, how, um, how much of a balance issue do you have, um, either due to the stroke, due to the medication, or luckily if it's both, right? Um, so there's many things just due to the stroke may impact your balance and your mobility, uh, be it foot drop, be it paralysis, be it, you know, spasms and seizures, uh, be it you're in a wheelchair or some kind of, you know, you need a cane or a walker, right? You, you move in a jerky fashion, like movement isn't fluid. Uh, now with proprioception, it does get better. However, like anything with the stroke, um, your doctors are basically going to give you um, best guess. Right? They're, they're not going to be able to give you definitives at times. However, the great news is with a good clinical team and a good baseline assessment of your actual abilities and reassessment at regular intervals, you can have a fairly decent outcome. Right? Uh, and again, that all depends on you know, how severe was your stroke, uh, what deficits and difficulties it left you with. I'm not trying to speak for everyone that's had a stroke in any way. I can speak in specifics from my experience um, in, in generalities for others' ex potential experiences. And then for possible outcomes, I can just give you what that could look like. Right. But proprioception, you know, um, and, and how you interact and relate to your environment through your various senses, it can definitely be hampered because of your stroke. Um, how you will overcome that? Well, you can just curl up in a ball and say, fuck it. You know, I don't need to go in the world again. Um, I don't need to ever, you know, smell apple pie again or... I don't ever need to, you know, bend over to tie up shoes again, or, you know, why should I pick bean bags up off the floor? One, I don't own any bean bags, and two, I'm not dumb enough to throw things on the floor. You can choose to do that. It's completely in your power. Go ahead, do it. Problem, it's never getting any better, right? You are going to be left permanently hobbled because you didn't take the opportunity when you should have to do the rehabilitation to help with your recovery and your reintegration. There are days that are going to suck, um, and your first your first couple of weeks at physio, it's wretched. It sucks. You are going to leave exhausted, and you're only going to have been there for maybe 45 minutes, and maybe you've done like three different exercises, because that's all you can manage that day. Perfectly okay. Right? There are days where it's going to be stupidly easy in physio, and you're like, woohoo! And the next time you go, you're going to have a bit of a setback, right? You're not going to be able to perform at the same way, the same level. Again, totally normal, right? Best I can say when it comes to your advancement in, in learning how to remaster, you know, a skill that you learned as a toddler, right? Because remember, most of the skills that you need to rebuild are unconscious skills. They are things you just do, right? Um, things that you don't, in some cases, even need to think about. You learned how to maintain your own balance in relationship to your direction, in, in relationship to your speed of travel, in relationship to your goal of travel. Like, you learned all of that as a toddler. Now, as an adult, you got to relearn it. Right? It sucks. Totally sucks. But these skills are master. Like, you can regain mastery of these skills exactly to the level that you may want to regain the mastery to your skills i can't say um you know enough to be able to interact with the world yeah definitely that is a possibility however as every stroke is unique to the individual and that individual again is unique to themselves the potential outcomes are vast and varied right all i can say is yes proprioception can be fixed right so on that note i'm going to land the plane if you happen to like what you've seen over the last coming up, uh, well, be five months tomorrow, um, please like, share, subscribe with your friends. You know, if you know someone themselves that is going through the throes of a stroke, uh, through the re rehabilitation, the recovery, the reintegration, or someone who's supporting someone who's going through a stroke, please let them know about the channel. Like, share, subscribe. If there's anything you want to see me cover or, or questions you have about my experience or the potential experiences you might have in general, 
leave a comment down below or you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com and I'll definitely respond to any comments or questions. And again, if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being, uh, they look belittled, befuddled, confused. Uh, you have uh, immediate visual deficits. Something's wrong with your vision. Blurry vision, um, cloudy vision, vision out of one eye, you know, whatever. The world, the world looks suddenly magically gray, right? The light hurts. Uh, you happen to have facial droop. You can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. That's possibly a proprioception issue. Um, you can't smile equally effectively at all. You are slurring your speech. You're stuttering your speech. You have inappropriate word usage for situation or context. You have general body weakness, weakness on one side. You're unable to, you're unable to stand unaided. Again, proprioception issue, right? Um, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple could save a life.